I'm thinking of running for president of the Ron Swanson fan club, Pyramid of Excellence. There are now 19 Democrats running for the 2020 presidential nomination. 19! Which means, because of math, that if they all had an equal chance of winning the nomination, they would each have roughly a 5% chance of victory. Which, I mean, it's not terrible. After all, you have a 1 in 13,983,816 chance, give or take, of winning the jackpot in the lottery. But that doesn't stop people from buying tickets every single week. Here's the thing, though. Not all the 19 candidates in the presidential race have equal odds at victory. According to Bovada, an online betting site that I have never, ever frequented, <laughs> California Senator Kamala Harris, Vermont Senator Bernie Sanders, and former Vice President Joe Biden, who isn't even in the race officially yet, have the best odds at winning, all at around five to one or six to one. Now lots and lots of people actively running for the Democratic nomination have much longer odds than that. Now it might not be one in a million, but it's pretty close. And yet they run following the words of that immortal philosopher Lloyd Christmas in Dumb and Dumber. So you're telling me there's a chance. But why do they run? Why spend two years of your life away from your family, beg it, uh, asking for money from total strangers, and subjecting yourself to untold amounts of scrutiny for the chance, literally, that lightning will strike? The chances of being struck by lightning, just in case you're interested, in any given year are roughly one in 700,000. Hmm. Now the answer to the why they run question isn't simple. Almost nothing in life is, kids. But here are the five main reasons why people, even those who don't seem as though they have any chance, do decide to run. Reason number one, a long shot isn't a no shot. Do I think Hawaii Congresswoman Tulsi Gabbard is going to wind up as the Democratic nominee in 2020? I do not. Her campaign has struggled to raise money or even build an organization. And her decision to meet with the Syrian president in 2017 got her all the wrong sorts of attention. Would I say that Tulsi Gabbard can't be the Democratic presidential nominee? I would not, for one simple reason. Donald Trump is currently the president of these United States. Gabbard is not any longer of a shot for the 2020 Democratic nomination than Trump was for the 2016 GOP nod. Long shots in politics and everywhere else have always believed that if only they could find their moment, they could make the magic happen. And now they have Donald Trump to fully justify that belief. Reason number two, the consolation prizes aren't all that bad. For everyone but the one lucky winner, the 2020 presidential race isn't going to end the way they wanted it to. But just because you don't wind up as the nominee doesn't mean you can't still wind up on the winning side of things. Take, for example, Rick Perry and Ben Carson. Both men ran against Donald Trump in the 2016 primary campaign. Both lost. But in a way, they won because Trump liked enough of what he saw to offer them gigs in his administration. Think of it like this. If Ben Carson didn't run for president and lose, is there any chance he is the Secretary of Housing and Urban Development right now? And the answer to that is obvious. Of course there's no chance. Leadership skills are not transferable. You know what I mean? Like, 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 like Ghostface Killer is the leader of Wu-Tang Clan, right? LeBron James, <laughs> the leader of Cleveland Cavaliers. Doesn't mean they should be the leader of housing and urban development. <laughs> he himself said, I don't know how to run an office. Some are, some are not. Coming out of poverty doesn't make you qualified. Coming out of public housing doesn't make you qualified to run public housing. I mean, that, by that logic, half of black America should be the head of HUD. <laughs> Reason number three, it looks pretty damn good on your resume. Now, is there any way that you can think of where having a line in your resume that reads, former presidential candidate looks bad? No, there isn't. Quote, it gives you a certain stash of the rest of your life, kind of like having once been Speaker of the House, said former Speaker of the House and former presidential candidate Newt Gingrich to the New York Times in April. Quote, they introduce you and then they say, and former presidential candidate. It's not bad. It's not bad, Newt. Not bad at all. Reason number four, you can elevate an issue. Now, even as the governor of a state, there's only 50 of them, you have a relatively limited ability to push a single issue onto the national agenda. That's not the case as a presidential candidate. Take Jay Inslee, he's the governor of Washington state. Now Inslee has been a passionate advocate of the need for our country and the world to address the dangers of climate change for a very 
long time now, dating back to his time in Congress. But had you heard of him or his views on climate change before he announced he was running for president? Mm, yes, sidebar, I acknowledge many of you still may not have heard of Inslee. Now, Inslee, the governor of Washington state, doesn't get an hour-long town hall on CNN to talk about his views on climate and everything else. Jay Inslee, the presidential candidate, though, he does get that for him. If I am elected to this high honor, I will make defeating climate change the number one priority of the United States. Reason number five, ambition with more ambition sprinkled with a little more ambition. Politicians, put up the breaking news, Chiron, are an ambitious lot. And being president or even running for the job of president is seen as the highest rung you can get to on the achievement ladder. So naturally, politicians want to get there. And ambition can be a good thing, pushing you to try things you're not comfortable with and where success is far from certain. It can also, however, cloud your judgment to the point where you have convinced yourself of something that literally no one else believes. Now, no one runs for president without seeing a path, albeit in some cases a very, very, very narrow path to victory. But victory isn't always the same thing as winning, either the nomination or the White House. And that is the point. We make new point episodes every single Tuesday and Thursday. Check them all out.